Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Miss KK and this is The Wave. It is your weekly show that looks at topics related to personal, family and business finances and our hope is that by the time we get to the end of this series, you are better equipped to make sound financial decisions. If you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. We really love having you on board. Please consider subscribing. And if you are already a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support, interaction, as well as sharing the videos with your friends and family, because that way you help us to grow this amazing community. All right. Today, I'm going to do a very brief video on the bonds. I saw that Bank of Namibia is issuing govern government bonds, you know, hope to help uh, the government raise money for whatever cash flow need they, um, they have at the moment. So I just want Wanted to highlight in in light of the mtc prospectus that is already out and um the bonds that are now out what is the difference between bonds and shares and i'm really super excited that we are finally seeing some liquidity in the namibian market meaning there is some activity helping taking place and if you have the money you can uh, uh, p potentially participate in this um uh, liquidity that is currently happening and also i uh, both bonds and shares you the the issuer of the security in this case so if i'm saying security is essentially that money instrument that the issuer is issuing out so mtc mtc security is called shares and uh, bank of namibia or the government's um security that are currently in issues are called bonds so those are the two terminologies that we are going to be using so um to start off with the, the very very basic difference between shares and bonds is that shares give you a, a right of ownership in the company whereas bonds do not shares are a form of equity whereas bonds are a form of debt and as you all understand debt is a loan it's repayable uh, back to the um, the person that provided the funding so that means that if you are a bond holder the issuer of the security the issuer of the bond in this in, in this case the government will pay you back whereas if you are the um, a, a shareholder the issuer of the security in terms of mtc in this case won't pay you back and if you want to exit you need to sell your shares to to be able to recover your money that is the main main difference okay so just like shares bond are a form of raising money a company if a company doesn't have money or if a government doesn't have money to either you know fulfill their cash flow needs they'll generally go out to the public issue this bond raise funding and they go and use the money for whatever reason they want to do it so basically what the government is saying they need money to go do whatever they need to do and they are asking the public me and you plus corporates to actually come and buy this um, bond so that they can actually have the money to use it for whatever they need bonds pay what is called a coupon and the coupon is literally a percentage of interest that is calculated on your on your nominal value so assuming the the government issues a bond at a thousand and they're saying we are going to pay you 10 percent coupon rate that means they will pay you a hundred dollar per bond that you have and that hundred dollar is normally paid also half twice a year just like shares they will normally declare a, a half yearly coupon and they will declare the remaining at year end so the in terms of um coupons and, and dividends they generally work the same but a coupon is guaranteed the issuer of the security in this case the bond has guaranteed that they will pay you a hundred dollar every year Whereas shares dividends are not uh, guaranteed, they are at the discretion of the company, they depend on the profitability of the company, they depend on also the dividend policy of the company plus cash flow requirement. So the company may decide to pay you dividend or they may decide not to pay you. Whereas the issuer of a bond cannot decide that because it's a debt instrument. So that's the first key distinctive uh, difference between the two or the second rather. So bonds also, if bonds are also traded in the sec secondary market, just like shares, and if you are going to be buying and trading the bonds before its maturity, you are going to be subject to a movement in the market value of the bond. But if you are holding your bonds until maturity, so bonds generally are issued for a defined period of time. They will tell you we are issuing a 20 year government bond. It will pay you a coupon rate of 10%. So if you buy the bond at year one and you sell it in year 20, you are not affected by the movement in the market value of the bond in, in the interim period between issuance and maturity. So that means what you put in is what you get out plus the coupons that you're able to co to collect of a hundred dollar of the over the 20 years and uh but if we're going to be selling it in between there obviously the market value as it fluctuates and people buy as you know credit rating of the country is adjusted all of those things will influence the market value and you may sell your bond at a lower price or you may sell your bond at a higher price so that is the one thing that i wanted to highlight so in terms of maturity bonds are like i've mentioned they are issued uh 
for a defined period of time so the lower the maturity of the bond that means they're bringing your money back within a short period of time the lower the interest rate because there's no risk to you the higher the much the longer the maturity the higher the interest rate because they need to compensate you for the fact that you are willing to give up your money for the next 20 years and you also don't know if this company or if this government will be able to pay you back in your money in 20 years. So for that increased risk, they are likely to compensate you through a higher interest rate. So that is now the uh, in terms of the maturity. And remember, shares don't have any maturity. So a company can continue to exist for as long as they want. And therefore, um, there is no maturity to shares, but there is a maturity to bonds. Then... Um, in terms of the key f key features again um the bonds have agreed terms you get paid back your money at face value you are paid a periodic interest rate that is guaranteed and it's normally this interest is normally linked to prime and unfortunately at the moment or rather fortunately for us as consumer the prime the prime rate is is low at the moment simply because of the measures that the bank of namibia tried to intervene last year to try and shield the, the economy of the country from the impact of coronavirus so that means as they kept reducing the repo rate the prime rate also decreased so if you are buying the bond now your interest rate would be lower than some Someone that that would have bought this that would have bought this bond two years ago but um so that means that uh, and, and normally these bonds are issued at a fixed interest rate so if you buy the bond today you are going to get the coupon at the rate that um the, the bond is issued at so as the interest rate picks picks up unfortunately you won't be able to benefit from that increase in interest rate if it's a fixed uh, interest rate bond and normally um you remember like i said because you are not an equity holder you are a debt holder you don't con you don't participate in any growth of the company so if the company were to do extremely well and they are profitable because you've given this money you are not going to benefit from that unlike if you're a shareholder if the company does really well you get to uh, get a higher dividend if there's a higher profitability although it's not guaranteed it's highly likely and on, on the opposite is also true if the company does poorly and you are a shareholder you're likely to incur a loss whereas if the company does purely and you are a debt uh, a debt holder or a bond holder you're unlikely to be affected by those losses but lastly like i've mentioned they are both they are both a form of raising funds so the only reason why a company would issue bonds or a, a government would issue bonds they need money for whatever reason it is it could be to fund their operational expenses for our case maybe the government need money to buy to pay for salaries they need money to pay for public health services maybe they need money to pay for other maturing bonds so the government likely is likely to i think they have some bonds that are maturing in sometime soon or if not next year so um they need to make sure that by the time those bonds mature they have enough money to pay those bondholders because those bondholders are expecting their money back so it could be that the money that you're giving to the government now is not really to be diverted into um paying salary etc but rather to redeem bonds that are already in, ex in existence that are coming to maturity so really that's all i wanted to highlight so in summary bonds are a form of debt you buy it it's um you buy it from someone that is issuing it you are guaranteed to get a return uh, every year that return is likely to be paid twice a year and you're likely to get your money back when the bond matures so so i know there's a bit of concern in terms of whether it's actually not a worthwhile investment to um invest in government bonds because people have this notion that the government is broke for example um but i i, I can almost say that the government will always try to by all means honor the bond commitment the bond repayment because it has far reaching consequences for them not to pay the bonds because remember your the, your government is also your government bonds and various other things are also rated by the credit rating agency and if we were to be downgraded to a junk status simply because the government did not honor a particular set of bonds that can have far consequences far reaching consequences to the economy ranging from you know investors pulling out of the country economy investors not wanting to come to the economy the exchange rate losing value etc so the government will almost do anything it can to try and honor their commitment so it's almost a safe way to invest and it's almost a, a guaranteed return to invest so really that's all i wanted to um highlight in this video what are bonds how do they work how do you make money from bonds and is it really worth investing in bonds like i've mentioned i haven't been able to get 
holder of the Bank of Namibia prospectus. So I don't really have any details with regards to, you know, um, the, f the full details of the prospectus, except what I've read in the Namibian article where they say you need at least a minimum 50,000 to participate. So if you have 50,000 and you really think it's worth um, your while, please uh, call uh, Bank of Namibia or go to their web go to their website try and see if you can find it or go to any of the branches They actually said they are available at their branches Then you can get it so that you can get all the information to make your decision. Thank you so much for tuning in I really really hope you learned a thing or two Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so and as always stay safe. Bye. -bye.